In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. This parable of the sower is one that some consider the first parable that our Lord Jesus Christ told. You'll find it in the Synoptic Gospels, in other words, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke in the Bible, and it's certainly one of the most well-known one of the maybe 30 parables that our Lord Jesus Christ had told. And the Lord's explanation of the parable is easy to understand. We heard it in today's Gospel according to St. Luke. We heard it last night in the Gospel according to St. Mark. And of course, there have been commentators in every generation that have developed the parable to make it applicable. We don't depend so much on our own interpretive abilities, um, but we depend more on the commentary and the writings of the Holy Fathers of the Church. These are individuals with God-given insight into the meaning of the Holy Scriptures. So we want to look at what St. Cyril of Alexandria wrote about this parable. He comments on the seeds that fell by the wayside first, and I'll quote, I'll quote him. He says, No sacred or divine word will be able to enter those who have minds that are hard and unyielding, for it is by the aid of such words that the joyful fruit of virtue can grow. Men of this kind are highways that are trodden by unclean spirits and by Satan himself. It doesn't mean those that are possessed by the devil, but those that are under the spell of the devil. They shall never be producers of holy fruit because their hearts are sterile and unfaithful. These are the type of people who don't heed Christian instruction or commandments or admonition. These are the types of people who are kind of removed from God and maybe live in darkness. These are the kind of people that reject or don't accept the Word of God. These are the kinds of people that might hear, but they don't obey. These are the kinds of people that refuse repentance, or they think that they can just privately repent in their room. These are the kinds of people that refuse spiritual guidance altogether, or refuse even to spiritually struggle in their spiritual lives. They prefer stagnation, if not stepping backwards. So these are people who are really stubborn and rely on themselves and don't intend to follow the will of God. And then St. Cyril comments on the set of seeds that fell on the rocky ground, and he says, this is a religion without roots. When this kind of person goes out of the church, he immediately forgets the holy teachings that he has heard. And as long as Christians are left in peace, he keeps the faith. But as soon as persecution arises, he will be ready to take flight in search of safety. What is wrong with this picture? Well, historically, Christians have always been persecuted, which means we are continually going to have challenges. There's always going to be rough times, tempests, storms. And so really, all generations of Christians have been persecuted. These are the ones who enter the church, as we are today, and they feel pleasure in seeing so many people gathered together in the house of God, and they joyfully receive instruction from Abuna who's giving the homily. And some of them might even praise the priest. But when they leave the church, they forget the sacred doctrines and they proceed in their usual course. They go about their business again, not having stored up within them any spiritual matter for any future benefit. And again, if their affairs go on peacefully, they hardly maintain the faith, but if trouble arises, look out, because they lose themselves completely, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, because they have no roots they change 180 degrees, right? There's temptations in the world, at work and at school. And people of this kind, they become far from what a Christ-centered person should look like. They could be on a sports team, which there's nothing wrong with that, but they follow the sports culture 
where let's say people are just spewing all sorts of vulgarity and it becomes common amongst a sports team or they indulge in sinful behaviors like alcohol or drugs or looking at vivid images and these kinds of things. Saint Cyril then comments on the seeds that fell among the thorns and he exhorts us not to allow the cares of the world to choke the shoots of faith and commitment. And these are the kinds of people who want to follow God but also want to enjoy the pleasures of the world. And they don't know how to find divine pleasure or holy pleasure or wholesome pleasure. These are the ones who delight in materialistic possession, as it says in 1 Timothy, for we brought nothing into the world, nor can we take anything out. Or in Proverbs it says, treasures profit not the wicked. St. Cyril comments on this third type of seed, and he says, wealth immerses us in the basest we, uh, wickedness and banquets and the delight of gluttony and carefully prepared sauces, music and drunkenness and the pitfalls of wantonness, pleasures and sensuality and pride that is hateful to God. So again, being entrenched in the pleasures and the cares of the world. As it says in the scripture, uh, St. John's first epistle, everything that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of the world. And the world passes away and this lust, but he that does the will of God remains forever. He that does the will of God remains forever. Going back to the parable, finally, there were other seeds that fell on good ground and they bore fruit up to a hundredfold. And these are the ones who hear the word of God and enforce it and live it and breathe it and eat it and drink it and inhale it. These are the ones that consume the word of God like honey and they love it. They, they practice what they read in their lives. These are the ones that, number one, they don't allow Satan to steal the word from them. Number two, they don't allow tribulation in their lives to separate them from the love of God. And number three, they don't attach themselves to the cares of the world, but they attach themselves to salvation and the kingdom of heaven. But why did the sower sow seeds where he knew it wouldn't produce fruit? Why didn't he just sow the seed on the good ground? St. John Chrysostom comments and says, For as the sower makes no distinction in the land submitted to him, but simply and indifferently casts his seed, so the Lord himself makes no distinction between the rich and the poor, between the wise and the unwise, between the slothful and the diligent, between the brave and the cowardly, but he discourses unto all. So it doesn't matter what kind of a person or where you come from or what walk of life, but those seeds have reached you. St. John Chrysostom continues to comment and says, it is impossible for the rock not to become rock or the wayside not to be wayside or the thorns not to be thorns, but in reason endowed creatures like we are that's not the case it is possible for the rock to change and become rich land and for the wayside to no longer be trampled upon nor lie open to all who pass by and that it may be fertile field and for the thorns that they may be destroyed so that the seed may enjoy full security for had it been impossible, the sower would not have sown. That's St. John Chrysostom. There are some who have said, it is easier for a leopard to change its spots or a tiger to change its stripes than for humanity to change. People have said that. Maybe you've heard it. 
But what we're hearing today is the opposite. That anybody can make a transformation in his heart and be able to enjoy the seed and allow it to grow if he just allow Christ in his life. Any human being can make a transformation, a conversion. It doesn't matter what kind of soil my heart is now. Am I willing to till it, to fertilize it, to loosen it up? Even if it's compressed solid like a rock, God can change it into the most fertile soil. But we must ask him and we must follow him and his word and his teachings and become citizens of the kingdom of heaven and glory be to God forever. Amen.